to radio. In my life there came a time When I had to make a change You know the things just weren't right I looked around for someone else to blame I searched and I searched and I reached down inside And I knew when I found there's a light I can hide I can be free, I can be free, I can rise above, I can be free, I can be free, I will rise above, when you're all alone. Good afternoon everybody, this is Dr. Duncan McCollum coming to you live from KSCO Radio. A nice foggy day in Santa Cruz. I love this weather. So nice. So um, today I have a, my subject for today is, are you being proactive or reactive? And so many times patients ask me, uh, what's my topic going to be on Saturday? And I always respond, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> and oftentimes I'm not sure until I sit down in the seat. However, Oftentimes, my patients inspire me. And uh, the other day, one of my uh, patients, a, a woman in her late 60s, uh, and her husband are both patients, and um, she said to me, you know, I felt like I was getting a, or no, my husband feels like he's getting a cold, so he's staying home today. And I went, huh. Now, I know that I always have my staff tell anybody of any of my patients that call say well come on in and get adjustment the best thing you can do is get your immune system going for you well, we there's a study coming out in new zealand uh by a, a group of chiropractors that show a 22 percent increase in the immune function by adjusting the atlas or something like that some percentage and you know there's not a lot of money out there for um advertise or for doing the studies of an adjustment because there's not a lot of money to be made off of it by the powers that be that like to do other studies. So at any rate, so it was kind of interesting. She goes, you know, my viewpoint is if I'm, if I feel like I'm getting sick, I just decide not to. I just decide what do I need to do to not get sick? I'm not going to let it happen. Where my husband's viewpoint is, oh, I might be getting sick. I think I'll hucker down and wait for it to, the storm to hit. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm along the line as she, where, um, you know, I'm proactive over my health and my immune system. And I, you know, I'm not diligent about it. I have fun and I do things that perhaps compromise my health now and then. Uh, that's called living. And, uh, but anytime I feel like I'm uh, being exposed and or get something uh, that might cause my body to break down, I'm proactive about doing something about it. And I have not been sick in years, except for my ruptured appendix, which was not an easy thing. But, uh, you know, throughout this whole thing, I haven't been sick once in the last many years. And it's all my own personal immune system. No enhancement has helped me stay healthy. So, and I'm around often 100 people a day easily. And, uh, you know, I just know if I keep myself adjusted, um, well adjusted and my mind well adjusted, and stay proactive over my health and what I'm putting in my body, I have a much better chance of staying healthy. But uh, so the subject of proactive versus reactive is so huge. I mean, how many people out there are just waiting for something to happen? They're watching TV, 
they're listening to the news, they're um, looking for their next response. Now, listen, I'm not saying it's a good or bad way to be, but I think uh, when I remember um, I was in a, a multi-level marketing business about 30 years ago, and uh, right, wrong, or indifferent regarding that, the leaders always inspire you to read uh, books of, of great innovative people. And are you going to be proactive or reactive? Are you going to be um, docile or are you going to do, do something about it? And that's what is so cool about human nature and about the, the spiritual being is that we can create energy. We can, we, there's something within us that creates energy. Sure. Yeah. Food and all this, but you know, and fuel and water. However, the um, spark of interest, the spark of life is what really is our driving force. So you can um, be like the husband, which is kind of, oh, here comes this something. I'm going to hunker down and wait for the storm to go. Or you can go, oh, here comes something. I'm going to just decide if this isn't going to affect me. Or I'm going to go somewhere else. Maybe I'll go south through the winter. You know, that's what the some of the migrating animals do. You know, they're, they go, I'm proactive. I'm getting out of here. It's freezing. I'm going down where it's warm. And then when it gets too hot, they go north. That's pretty good instinct that these um, less sentient beings have, you know, these butterflies and um, beetles and, and eagles and all that, whatever animals migrate. And nomads, the humans would migrate. One of the greatest Indian tribes, um, the Comanches, were the horse people. And they were in Western Texas and uh, I believe it's uh, Arizona and um, part of, New Mexico, these guys would travel so much. Um, and they were, that was one of the, uh, their defenses is you never knew where they were going to go. They would migrate based on, you know, need and being proactive to keep their people happy and alive and full of food. So anyway, I think that it's, you know, it's kind of interesting right now to take a look at your health. What's happening? I was talking to somebody this morning about um, Alzheimer's, she read a statement that said one out of six people are going to be getting Alzheimer's now. And that's the statistic that she read from PubMed or something like that. And what's really interesting, they say by 2050, I believe one out of three people will have Alzheimer's disease. And we were discussing this and it's like, well, how is that? You know, what's going on with the body? And so I've talked about this, uh, many times, not lately, but diabetes type three is another name for Alzheimer's disease. So you have diabetes type one, type two, and type three. It used to be juvenile diabetes because that's when the pancreas would um, just stop working or stop producing insulin on kids. And we, uh, you know, the um, powers that be wasn't exactly sure why the, um, alternative health crowd believes it's some kind of toxicity that has damaged the uh, pancreas at that point. But because of the amount of children that were getting diabetes type 2 in the last couple of years, they stopped calling it juvenile. They started calling it 1, 2, and 3. And uh, type 3 diabetes is not really well known, but um, it is too much insulin, it's called hyperinsulinemia. That's too much insulin in the blood. Hyper is too much, insulin is insulin, and emia is blood. And that means that you have so much insulin in your blood because you're type two diabetic, which means your cells can't recognize insulin. So the um, cellular signal is put out to the brain to get more insulin in the body so that it can keep the sugar out of the blood so you don't die. And pretty soon your body goes through uh, gyrations. And if you're in this civilization, you end up at the doctor and they say, your blood sugar is too high, you need more insulin. And they start giving you insulin, a man-made insulin. And it could stabilize your blood sugar, but they never go about fixing the problem in the first place. So it was a reactive um, solution to a problem. What's the proactive solution would be going to say, well, wait a minute, our bodies are the greatest physicians in the world. Um, the, we have the greatest physician that ever lived in our body called the innate intelligence. 
And for some reason, these last few generations are getting sicker and sicker and sicker. So the proactive point of view would be, let's figure out why the body is physically, but the greatest physician that ever lived who is in your body is having a hard time keeping your body healthy. That's the proactive way. And undoing those factors other than the reactive approach, which is the mass drugging of um, civilization. And if you don't understand that, realize that the United States, which is only 4% of the world population, takes 70% of all the drugs and medications made in the world. So that's pretty reactive, but it's proactive on one person's part or one company's part or one industry's part because they're wanting to um, create some revenue off of our demise or our sicknesses. And as Jason Fung says, a great nephrologist who wrote the book, um, Complete Guide to Fasting, he said, if you could create a medication that didn't kill somebody, but it didn't cure them, how long would that they have to be on that medication? Well, forever. So here we are in one of the greatest countries, the greatest country in the world, and we have free enterprise. And all of a sudden we have to that end, more drugs available to cover up symptoms than any other country in the world. And we consume 70% of all of them made in the world and we're only 4% of the world population. Kind of crazy. So um, we want to figure out what can we do to be more proactive over our life? Well, number one, it was very interesting listening to Tom Quinn and Gary Arnold's show today talking about being proactive in elections, you know, and we can kind of just sit back and, and watch what's happening by these um, unelected officials, people that are appointed to offices that should be elected, and we're so complacent as a group or so uneducated, probably because we're, most of us are too overwhelmed to do study the candidates anyway, and we're just trying to make ends meet, but you know, the point is that these guys are here being proactive, trying to give us a viewpoint and understanding of what we can do to make our world better. And right now, our world is not very good. So um, I'm going to take our first break here. I'm going to come back in just a couple minutes. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, uh, McCollum Chiropractic in, in Capitola. Um, I want to, uh, before I take a break, I'm going to say thank you to one of my listeners, Barbara. And Barbara is 88 years old, and she listens to my show a lot. And Barbara, thank you for referring your daughter, Lisa, in. It was really nice to meet her, and I'm sure we're going to be able to help her out. So thank you so much for that, and uh, I'll be back in just a second. Thank you. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum here, and I have Pastor Mark with me. He came in and experienced the stem cell machine, the TRT machine, and he wanted to just go ahead and tell you a little bit of his experience. Yeah, I injured my knee years ago from sports and being dumb, and after the first stem cell treatment, after the very first one, I could go full knee squat, and doctors told me uh, that we want to replace your knee, and my knee would just ache just from sitting, and you probably experienced that if you have knee problems, but now, no ache, I can walk without pain. And when I sit, I had no pain. And I just love it. I'd recommend it to anybody. It's terrific. When we looked at your x-rays, your discs and your knees look pretty good, too. Yeah, they're improving so much. I just love it. I can't wait for my treatment every week. Highly recommend it to anyone. So you recommend they do the $49 special to see if it will work for them? Oh, absolutely. That's what drew me in with the $49 special. I thought, I got 50 bucks to spend to just see. And it certainly has paid off. Call 831-459-9990. Thanks. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I would like you to listen to a couple testimonials from my patients about our new TRT machine. You should come try it, but here's what they have to say. A year and two months ago, I got knocked down by a horse, and I got a grade two pull on my hamstring, and from there, everything went to hell. Uh, basically, uh, I was walking three and a half miles a day. I went from that to walking less and less because it was so painful, and my other knee started hurting me. And then I stepped off a ladder and jammed my knee. It took me the next morning five minutes by the time I stood up to get out of my bedroom. It was so painful. At the same time, I found out about the TRT from the doc, and 
I knew that that was for me. So almost feeling completely normal. So it's been great. I was walking stiff, stiff knee on one side because it was just flopping out of place. Now I can bend my knee and walk. I totally recommend this one time. And you'll just go, whoa. You don't realize how much you use your toes for balance until they're, there's no feeling in them. And so I've got the feeling back in my toes, and my balance is greatly improved. Definitely recommend it. So call today for your $49 introductory special on the TRT machine to see if it works for you. Call 831-459-9990. 831 459 9990, McCollum Family Chiropractic. You search and you search and you reach down inside. And you'll know when you find things of life you can't hide. You can be free. You can be free. You can rise Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum. I'm back on the air, and thank you very much for listening to KSCO, McCollum Wellness Radio. And uh, I just want to take a minute to, uh, you know, comment about uh, Michael Zwirling's uh, show this uh, morning. And at the end, when he's talking about passing the the uh, anvil on December 31st of this year. And uh, it's really, I um, appreciate everything that the uh, Zwirling family has done for this community and the state, keeping the station open and free. And, uh, you know, a number of us that have shows here are more concerned that the a new ownership may not allow the same format that we're having. Um, I sure enjoy the show and I enjoy talking to you all out there. So, um, you know, if you know anybody that's interested in helping out, um, you know, Tom Quinn's a good guy to talk to about it. Uh, myself, um, <clears throat> be much better than some big conglomerate picking us up. So just throwing that out. You never know who might be listening and who knows somebody who, you know, might just go, heck, I can, I can flip the bill and uh, keep this uh, station free. Um, other than that, uh, the stem cell machine is, is just always amazing, the TRT machine. Uh, we have Dr. Erica Ziegler uh, running the machine now. She's fantastic. New addition to our office. Just brings light in the office. She's so friendly, knowledgeable. Uh, people that get the treatment from her say she's the best that we've had. And uh, really happy to have her on board. Also, uh, when you call the office... B, uh, Beatrice just turned 23 yes, uh, Friday, yesterday. Very, very um, wonderful girl. Takes care of the office, takes care of you when you call and uh, when you come in. She's going to be the one that greets you. Um, Natalie also works up in the front and she's incredibly friendly. Uh, we have Mariah, who's kind of like picks up all the pieces and keeps the office together by shoestrings keeping those all pulled together. And then Arlene, who's going down to um, El Salvador for a week now, uh, is also on staff there. But they're all great. I love my staff so much. And we get along so well. And our goal is to help people. And we do a really good job of it. Um, we're rated number one for uh, best chiropractor in Santa Cruz several years in a row by the good times. And that did not even, that didn't change last year. We're still rated number one. So, you know, what that means to me is that we're offering good service. And what you can do is you can always do the $49 uh, special for the stem cell machine that allows you to come into the office and get a complimentary consultation with me. If it looks like it's something to go forward, if it looks like it's a possibility we can help you or accept you in our office, We'll, I'll let you know. Let's go ahead and do the $49 special. We'll take an x-ray of your affected joint or part that you want to um, have checked out just so we know that it's uh, safe and okay and there's no nothing else going on in there we should be worried about. And um, so we're here to help. And we've helped a lot of people in the community. We're very busy. 
we're looking for another full-time chiropractor. If you know anybody that um, a chiropractor that likes to help people is uh, willing to work with a team, then have them contact me and um, we'll get him really busy and he'll be very um, well rewarded for his actions in my office. So um, I, again, I'm not sure of the fate of the station in next year. I'm hoping that the format remains the same, but I will be continuing my podcasts. You can find all these shows on McCollum Wellness Radio podcasts. So go to any of the Spotify or Apple or any of the various formats and you can find McCollum Wellness Radio. And also my YouTube channel, DR Duncan McCollum on YouTube. All of my shows are played there um, in video. So rather than just listening to me having a, a face for radio, I do have a face for video on my YouTube channel. And you can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And then we can do our best to continue to give you inspiration uh, talk about the latest health trends and uh, whatever else comes across the plate. So today, my um, the thing I've been talking about in the first part of the show is uh, proactive versus reactive. And, um, you know, I just want to make sure that you understand that your fate is in your hands. Um, you know, you can do so much to change your life. And sometimes it feels impossible. You feel like your fate is set. I had a young lady come in the office the other day and, um, you know, she had some health issues and she basically said, I, I don't really make money and I have health issues and I really can't afford treatment. And my family's been like this since the time of Memorial. And I just, you know, tried to give her some love back and go, I understand. Well, listen. Here's some things that you can do. We'll sit and do a video so you can at least get some exercises and stretches. But I thought to myself, gosh, wouldn't it be neat to change that viewpoint to go, you know what? Maybe I can make a change. Maybe something different will happen. You know, we're kind of like a freight train going down the road with the brakes, no brakes and nobody driving the train right now. And it's picking up more and more speed. And that's the way our country and world is going. It's out of control. And we're being the effect or of we're being the effect of people we don't even know are driving this whole thing. And um, it's going to explode or implode at one point. And uh, we're going to see these, you know, as they say, spectators never win. So there's some people that make things happen. There's something, some people that watch things happen, and there's other people that wonder what happened. So don't be the last. <laughs> don't be the ones that wonder what happened. Um, and I would say be better off not to be the ones that watch things happen, but be the ones that make things happen. And that's your choice. It's being proactive versus reactive. And, um, you know, you just pick a, pick a place in life to start. You can start by um, taking care of your own health. You can start by researching a little bit about any health conditions you have. If you just go to uh, your, your phone and ask that person who talks to you about what medications are related to Alzheimer's and you let that engine search for you, it's gonna talk to you about various antihistamines and um, anti, uh, uh, whatever all the other ones are, you can look at them. They, these things are, the chronic use of them actually are causing people to be more affected by Alzheimer's as they age. And even things like acid blockers, um, you know, your stomach, beta blockers are being related to Alzheimer's disease. So um, the aluminum in Tums, Alzheimer's disease. One of my uh, friend's son is... Uh, not doing well, having um, lots and lots of headaches over time. And he took Advil repeatedly for a period of time. And now he has liver issues because Advil will affect your liver when you use on a chronic basis. So you can just be reactive and take Advil every time you get a headache or whatever you're taking it for. Or you can be proactive and figure out what to do to clean up your body, clean up your liver and, um, you know, figure out what to do to get rid of your headaches. I mean, you're not an 
chiropractor, you're not an acupuncturist, you're not a, um, maybe you are, a um, natural health person or coach or alternative health person or a detox specialist, find somebody and go, what can I do different? Because right now we're rated 47th in the world for health and we're the most obese country in the industrialized world. Sitting around eating the foods that are advertised on TV, watching the drug commercials, which say this might help with this, but it could cause all of these side effects, rare kidney stones. And be sure to tell your doctor if you have a re reaction to this or if you already know you're allergic to this drug and tell your doctor if you have all these other heart diseases, liver diseases, you know, chronicity to cancers or tumors or um, tuberculosis, give me a break. You know, all these medications, now, again, I'm, I'm not advocating stopping anything you're on, but I am, being, I am advocating that you take a look at where your life and your health is today and deciding to do three things. One, nothing. Two, look into um, alternatives yourself. Or three, consult with some professionals who've got a lot of experience on how to help you turn it around. Last week, I talked about, you know, people have a legacy. They like to leave their family. They've got all their bank accounts, their 401ks, their property, um, and all these different things. So we've been taught from day one, you know, to put, you know, listen, listen remember Mary Pop Poppins with George Banks, Tuppets, you know, put Tuppets in the bank and uh, at a very low interest. And then they loan that money out 18 times and capitalize on your money. So, but being proactive on your legacy has been narrowed down to your financial legacy, not your health legacy. It's time to start to be proactive towards your health legacy, not reactive. Reactive is I have a symptom, take a drug. I have a symptom, take a drug. I have a symptom, take a drug. I have a symptom, take a drug until those drugs are causing the symptoms that are going to kill you. So, um, you know, you can do something about it. And uh, it's up to you to be decide to make the change. It's not too late until it's too late. So, um, you know, I want to go back to what I said a minute ago about being um, those who make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that wonder what happened. So you probably may or may not know this, but when... Um, the 13 colonies decided to break off of the stranglehold that England had on us and that the king had on the colonies in America. I don't even know if they teach that there's 13 colonies anymore. But um, there was a lot of controversy on who, you know, whether we should stay with the king or whether we should split off and become our own set of, 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 of our own nation. And as it turned out, so many people would, would watch what happened. And many people wondered what happened. But guess what percentage of the population of the colonies made things happen? It's unbelievable. 3% of the colonies, of the people of the colonies, fought on the American side in the Revolutionary War. 97% either sat on the sidelines to see which side won. And then there were, you know, a large portion of those people just wondering what happened. So it's, it's kind of sounds funny, but I think it's, that's a foreign concept to be proactive in more ways than um, we, we are. We're complacent in a way. And excuse me if I'm, offending you and you probably aren't but i know i've been and can be but um the thing that you want to do is just go you know I, I, so many people some friends were just up they're both retired they're 65 years old and they travel around they have a place up in oregon they have a place down south very cool but nice people and they have a great time with their um retirement they have some children that they um go up to visit one part of the country and then some in the other part of the country. There's nothing, that's great. They made it happen. And um, however, I can tell you that they have the financial freedom to do this, but I know that 
both of them are not as healthy as they could be. You know, they limit their activities because of severe pain um, and or um, diagnoses of blood conditions. So they're taking medications that are not fixing the problem. And the medication itself, which is a statin, which you take for cholesterol, the statin itself actually harms the heart, which is what you would take the statin for to lower the cholesterol. So the actual drug you're taking to lower your cholesterol harms the mitochondria and the cells in your heart. I, it's crazy. And people will stay on those statins till time immemorial rather than go, huh, let me look into the truth about statins. I gotta just get rid of this thing here and there. And um, so statins for high blood pressure, you know, they it used to be 250 was the number that was acceptable for um, statins, or excuse me, for triglycerides and uh, cholesterol, cholesterol. So got distracted, somebody tried to call this. And uh, it was 249. If you were 250, you were too high. And there were these statins that were invented back 20 years ago that could lower cholesterol. So all of a sudden, interestingly enough, the cholesterol acceptable bill, um, margin went down to 225. All of a sudden, a huge portion of the population were now um, able to take statins to keep that um, the cholesterol from 249 down to below 225. Then somebody thought, huh, what if we make it 199? What if we said 199 was the right amount of cholesterol in our blood? Great idea. That's how what another huge portion of people ended up on statin drugs. Man, if you had stock and statin, you'd be happy and clapping. You know, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. There's a talk of getting it down to 149. Now, let me tell you something. You need cholesterol. And you want to have the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. It's not a ratio. But cholesterol is what makes your brain. It makes your blood vessel walls healthy. It helps turn into fatty acids and amino acids. When you have uh, damaged um, cell walls in your arteries, the your body sends good, healthy cholesterol to that cell wall to actually plug it up. And then that good cholesterol becomes a low density cholesterol, bad cholesterol. That's supposed to go back to the liver and be converted into high density cholesterol again. And it goes back and forth. It's like your lungs, you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. You breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. Cholesterol runs through your body. It heals damaged parts of this body, whether it's the brain or other organs or cells in the um, vascular part of your body. And then that now that that's been used, it goes to the, the cholesterol goes back through the liver where it's converted into high density, healthy cholesterol again. And it's a machine that keeps going to keep you healthy. So your body is, is proactive to keeping your body healthy. And that's the innate intelligence of our body that's unbelievable. So when we have been programmed to eat unhealthy food for you know the last 50 to 70 years, really since World War II, so that's 70 years now or more, then, um, our body's ability to heal correctly has gone down so terribly that instead of 6% of the children being obese, that my, when I was a kid in the 1950s, 50% of the kids are obese. So in the most, the wealthiest country and the most modern country in the world, something is wrong, something's amiss. All right, good. So I'm gonna go to my second commercial break and then I'll be back in a couple minutes to clear things up. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I have this amazing patient, Gaylene, here, who walked into her office, well, barely walked into her office. Hardly able to walk and bent over. And within three visits, I was standing up straight, walking. I, I couldn't believe it. That's never happened to me before. It's been a very rough <laughs> road. But we're getting there, and I'm very grateful. And you had two back surgeries as well, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, in 1995. Yeah. 
And so they didn't really solve your problem. No, they didn't. And you came in, we did some stem cell treatments on you and some chiropractic on you, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're happy. I'm happy. Everyone here is just awesome. They're all here to help you. They're all so sweet. You should listen to Gaylene. See if we can help your health. That's right. Anyone that needs help, please come in. Thank you. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I would like you to listen to a couple of testimonials from my patients about our new TRT machine. You should come try it, but here's what they have to say. Hi, I'm Lauren Spencer, a local realtor. Lately, I've had trouble with my feet, and I'm an avid walker, avid biker, avid uh, golfer, and uh, my feet were aching all the time, and I tried Duncan's TRT machine, which is an amazing stem cell machine that rejuvenates uh, the cells and my feet I've had like three or four um, sessions with the machine and my feet are like new no aches no pains it's a miracle originally I, I heard about it on the radio and I was a little apprehensive but I came in and got got the treatment and miraculously I mean immediately I got relieved and we're talking about three years of 24 7 neuropathy all kinds of pain medical doctors and in one treatment it changed my life. I mean, I, it gave my life back because I was able to uh, function and do things and not be in excruciating pain and get some sleep. And I'm going to continue to come back, and I highly recommend it to anyone. So call today for your $49 introductory special on the TRT machine to see if it works for you. Call 831-459-9990. 831-459-9990. McCollum Family Chiropractic. Just try to remember the strength that we find. Oh, yeah. We can be free. We can be free. We can rise above. We can be free. Hello there, Dr. Duncan McCollum, coming back to you for the final few minutes here on KSCO McCollum Wellness Radio. And um, we've been talking about being proactive versus reactive and um, whether or not you are going to be one of those people that make things happen, one of those people that watch things happen, or one of those people that wonders what happens. And um, I was talking uh, earlier a bit and I want to make sure I finish this point about people putting away their financial legacy for their family and their kids. But oftentimes they have not, because we've never been taught this way, and especially by the, the media, brainwashes us into believing that our health it lies at the end of a pill or some kind of medication. And we know that most of those medications and pills are causing more damage in the long haul and because they stopped being effective pretty soon, you're gonna need more pills of different types to handle up the problem that they're causing. And it's all reactive, take a pill to something. And you know, and then what happens is at the end of the day, your memory goes away because of these, all of the effects of these drugs. We talked a few months ago about SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So, you know, Prozac's and those various drugs that would were so extant and popular and unfortunately still are for anxiety um, that now, even though we had the research back then, it has been uh, proven by a mega study and you should go listen to my show on SSRIs, go to McCollum Wellness Radio Podcast and you can find them and listen to them. I interviewed uh, Reverend Fred Shaw, who is a... Uh, a very um, proactive speaker for Citizens Commission on Human Rights. He's president of the NAACP um, in Compton and um, uh, many other attributes to his portfolio. Um, but we talked about the fact that those SSRIs have been proven not to work and that was promoted on a false premise, put out there and it's destroyed millions of people's lives because of the how many were pushed 
so many of the effects of these SSRIs is, um, culminates in suicide and various other things. So there was, you know, an article came out that said, mega studies show this doesn't work. It hit the news for a day and then it was done. So unfortunately, there's still people on them. But we know that chronic use of SSRIs is another contributor to Alzheimer's disease. So that's a great way to get rid of anxiety. Just forget, lose your memory. Might as well be a, put that in your bill of life. But my point is on the legacy, your health legacy is to get healthy now so that as you grow older, as you get into your twilight years, and your golden years, you're, you can enjoy your family till the end. Uh, one of my patient's mother just passed away a week ago. She was 105 years old, still had a very a perfect mind. Um, another one of my patients, um, Sonia's mother is 88. She says her body's failing her, but her mind is very strong. And um, she told her mom the other day, jokingly, mom, you are now one of my projects because, you know, she has to do things to keep her mom's body functioning while her mind is very alert. So you have a couple different options. Either you lose your memory and you have a functioning body which means somebody's going to take care of you and if it's not a family member all of your financial legacy is going to end up going towards keeping that body alive with you nobody home or you have your facility mental facility but you don't have the health to get around and enjoy your life so any of your legacy has been put there to keep your body functioning while you sit there and, and your quality of life diminishes while you sit there and watch it happen and not be able to do anything about it because it's too late. So being proactive means start now, do something about it. It's never too late for a new beginning. It's never too late for a new beginning. So you can decide to get help. I have recently um, in my office, I, I we have the stem cell machine, the TRT machine, which is we're busy all the time, but you should still come in and try it. You want to try this if you haven't. Um, it works uh, phenomenally. There's a few people that don't get the results, and there's reasons why. I won't go on to it in this show because I don't have time, but um, we'll let you know. You know, After the first $49 treatment, you either have results or not. Um, and if not, there's two reasons why, specifically. Um, but then what if it changed your life? You've heard the six of my patients on commercials today saying what kind of results they had. Now, what's really interesting about this machine is when you use it, it opens up, it opens up the area we treated on, causes an inflammatory response. This allows chemicals and new stem cells to get into the damaged area. And then those stem cells, like a chameleon, lay down and become the body part that was damaged. And then over a period of up to a year, they develop a new matrix of becoming that new body part. It's not like you put in a new voltage regulator and your car starts or a light bulb and the light goes on. You have to allow that basically embryonic cell to develop into that human being part that we want. But science is, uh, this machine is so far ahead of its time, it's unbelievable. So talk about, if you want to be proactive, come in and try it. Reactive is I'm going to get a cortisone shot. I'm taking medications. They're looking at knee surgery. Um, and maybe you need it, maybe you don't. But what if you did it and you didn't give a try to this innovative machine and the, the surgery went south? They do. Some of them do. Um, we can talk about that as well. So proactive, reactive, sick or well, I should say proactive well, reactive sick, proactive, you're a cause of your life, reactive, you're the effect of what comes by you. And you can create your life or you can let your life be destroyed by being the effect of what's going on around you. Whether it's politics, your health, the people you hang around with, the schools you tend or not, the where you work, um, who you support, who you don't support, who your friends are, the books you read. So it's never too late for a new beginning. And I think that now is a really good time to, to become 
uh, the person that you know you could become or become better at that. I, I'm always looking to be better myself and um, I have a long way to go. You know, I couldn't read till I was 28 years old. I'm working on getting book seven and eight out. I just haven't, I haven't had enough time to do it because I'm working so much helping people. Um, again, we have Dr. Erica in our office now, incredibly wonderful person you should meet. And she's running the TRT machine and she's very knowledgeable. Some of the best results we are, we've ever gotten, we're getting with her at the wheel. Uh, B will greet you when you come in uh, or Natalie, they'll answer the phone and they're both amazingly friendly people. Uh, Mariah is there um, also incredibly friendly and Arlene's there to help you figure out how to get the care you need. And um, you can find us in many different places. I love this radio show. I hope it continues beyond January. Um, I'm going to be here if it does. But if not, um, just go ahead and, and do this now. Go to McCollum Wellness Radio on YouTube, or excuse me, um, DR, Duncan McCollum on YouTube, and follow me. That will be very helpful. Or subscribe, I guess is what it is. You know, that will help the, the effort of keeping the word out there. Um, you can go to Facebook and follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Duncan McCollum. Um, and you can go to McCollum Wellness Radio Podcasts and uh, listen to those. And you can email these this information to other people. I want to thank Steve Funderberg for his song that I play on this show, You Can Be Free, sung by Tony Lindsay, eight-time Grammy Award winner. But his song, You Can Be Free, really speaks to where we are right now, you know, um, but it's time to make a change. You're not going to change any, you're not going to change till you decide to change. Change is going to happen. Undoubtedly, change is going to come. And um, are you going to be the cause of that change or the effect of it? You know, I think that in going out in the next couple minutes here, there's four different kinds of competency. And there's those people that blunder through life, no idea what they're doing and no idea that they're even causing problems for other people. And that would be likened to the people that wonder what happened. They're unconsciously incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. They can't fix anything and they don't even know they can't do. It. God bless those people. Hopefully they will move up to the next step, which is called consciously incompetent. This is where you no, come to the awareness that, darn it, I'm really not able to do anything good at all. I'm, I'm stumbling through life. Everything I touch, instead of turning the Midas touch, it's the unMidas touch. It turns to muck instead of gold. Everybody I come up in contact with is, does worse when I'm around them. Um, you know, at least you know. They're going, man, I got to change. So they're, in con they're consciously incompetent. So you have unconsciously competent, excuse me, unconsciously incompetent, the people that don't even know that they exist, really. And they can change. Then you have the consciously incompetent, which all of a sudden go, darn it, I'm really got to pay attention to what I'm doing and see what I can do to change my viewpoint. The third step up the, rack, up the ladder is the consciously competent. This means that they're now aware of their environment, they've gone through the work in order to become competent. They actually take a look at learning techniques or learning rules, learning um, tools, how to use tools to actually excel in life. So they're now becoming proactive instead of reactive. So they're consciously competent. And then there becomes a point where you become a master. And a master means that you're so good at your craft that you don't even have to think about what you're doing. And that's called the unconsciously competent. You just are good at it. Now, I don't know where you would have to be to be unconsciously competent in every, every area of your life. I don't think a mortal can be, but you can strive for it. And, you know, I know that they say that you have to do something 10,000 times to become a pro at it. Maybe you have to do something 10,000 times to become unconsciously competent. Um, that is one of the things I've treated over almost 20,000 patients. I've done 
over several couple million adjustments when I realize how many times I've adjusted everybody. I know I have a pretty good idea of who I can help and who I can't help. I've learned, you know, that the Hippocratic law is first do no harm. And if that means in when you're in the medical field, the first thing you do is do no harm. So if you're um, advocating people take substances that isn't curing them and doesn't isn't fixing them, but in the long haul, it's damaging their liver, kidneys, or brain, is the Hippocratic oath being held up? That's what all people in the healthcare field um, aspire to, or they, I believe, I know with our school, that was part of our um, exit speech was the Hippocratic Oath. So I try to live by that as much as I can. If I don't think I can help somebody, I'll let them know, and I'll try to refer them to somebody who I think is better suited to them. And so we don't accept all people because some people I can't, don't think I can help. And that might be their condition, or it also might be their unconscious incompetency on how to keep their body healthy. And it's not fair to them or me to try to help somebody who's not going to go through the efforts to make themselves healthy. So I always ask patients, I'll do everything I can if I think I can help them to get you healthy. But I ask one question, are you willing to do what it takes to get you healthy? So that will let me know whether or not I have somebody to work with. So are you proactive or reactive in your life? Draw a line in the sand. It's time to make a change. Uh, Steve Funderburg says it best in his song sung by Tony Lindsay. I appreciate you all. Follow me on YouTube, Duncan McCollum, Dr. Duncan McCollum YouTube. That is subscribe, I guess. Um, Facebook, Duncan McCollum, McCollum on this radio podcast. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week. We'll